Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Hal Hill, uh, Professor of Southeast Asian Economies at the ANU, and it's my great pleasure to be in conversation with my good friend, the very distinguished uh, Malaysian economist, Professor Muhammad Arif, who's visiting the ANU for this week and has just given a public lecture on the Malaysian economy. Um, Arif, it's great to have you back at ANU. It's, 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 always, it's always a pleasure. It's a pleasure, Hal. Thank you. Uh, Arif, thinking about Malaysia, Malaysia is one of the great development success stories, uh, both in East Asia and globally. But its growth has slowed down over the past decade. Uh, investment levels also have slipped quite a bit. Uh, uh, initially, the Asian financial crisis was the main explanation, but it's gone beyond the crisis period. To what do you attribute this general slowdown? After the crisis, Malaysia actually has been reinventing itself and uh, we, we realized that the input-driven growth of the late 80s and the early 90s uh, wasn't sustainable at all and so we had to to, to make, make, bring about major restructuring. In fact, the crisis of the 1997-98 was a wake-up call, you know, in the sense that uh, we, we need to do something serious to make ourselves relevant and uh, you know, competitive, and in the process, we also re, uh, we also realized the world economy itself, the external mm. environment, has not been mm. very very uh, uh, energetic, mm. and uh, in fact, the slowdown has been there not only for Malaysia but uh, for the rest of the world. Mm. You know, it's only a difference only a matter of degree, but in the process of restructuring ourselves, to you know, we need to. Uh, 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 do a uh, few surgeries here and mm. there, mm. and and when you restructure the economy, it takes a while mm. before you know you see the results of mm. it. Mm. So unfortunately, this restructuring exercise has coincided with the global slowdown, mm. and that may have contributed to what we see now. Mm. But generally speaking, uh, the, the the potential growth rate mm. has actually declined. Mm. So we are trying to to to. Uh, find or, or discover new growth uh, areas mm. and uh, uh, so that the the focus on uh, manufacturing you know it has shifted now mm. to to uh, mm. s to services mm. now with the services sector being the fastest mm. growing mm. sector sector mm. and uh, and, uh, and as a result uh, you know we 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 have we had to do some re-engineering mm. so uh, to me this uh, phase is is uh, is not completely mm. unique to Malaysia, mm. but also other countries mm. in, the mm. in the region also mm. have gone through mm. similar, similar things. Mm. But it is a, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's really the result of uh, uh, you know, shifting uh, the, 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 the uh, goals, as to, so, so to speak. Mm. And uh, uh, so it's, we, if we can really bring about mm. major policy reforms, mm. you know, which will jive with the mm kind of structural changes that we are mm. aspiring for, mm. then we can have the results in well, place. Well, uh, Malaysia's been in the news also in recent years uh, because of its politics. And my impression is that there has been some substantial change in the political landscape, uh, landscape since uh, around 2008. In particular, although the long-running Barisan is still running the country as it has since 1957, there has been the rise of a more vigorous opposition. Has that changed the the policy environment in any way, um, linked to the fact that that Malaysia needs to restructure and reorient itself? Yeah, two thousand eight is actually was a watershed year mm. for Malaysia, mm. in the sense that uh, for the first time in Malaysia's history, we you know there was a viable opposition mm. in in, mm. in 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 place mm. you know and uh, and uh, the, the the dramatic changes that took place mm. in by 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 really uh, denying the ruling uh, coalition mm. a two third majority in mm. the parliament itself was considered almost like a coup mm. and mm. Uh, and and that was a wake up call if mm. that is possible more is possible mm -hmm. you know that was the kind of uh, you know expectations that led to the the the, the, the next election in mm. 2014 mm. now obviously the government any government incumbent government has certain certain advantages mm. and and they also want to stay in power mm. as much as the, the the opposition wanted to get it, get, mm. get into getting into power mm. so in order to stay in power the the ruling government ruling coalition had to respond to the challenges mm. that are put up by the by the opposition mm. Mm. and 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 therefore they have been actually trying to 
to to to to steal the thunder away from the mm. opposition by trying to implement mm. some of the things that the mm. opposition have been clamoring mm. for. So in that sense, they have been able to you know address some of the issues, mm. you know. But unfortunately, they only they can go only certain distance mm. because you know otherwise it it will mm. go against a party mm. a party's own uh, own uh, mm. the, you know bottom line. One of these challenges, in fact, you alluded to in your public lecture today at the ANU, was the need to redefine the new economic policy. And Malaysia, of course, is unusual in having this very long-running affirmative action program, which many, perhaps most people, consider to, be, to have been a success initially, but it's been running now for over 40 years. In what way would you redefine this new economic policy? See, new economic policy is all about, uh, you know, social restructuring, mm. you know, kind of re affirmative action. Uh, and uh, uh, it, it was meant to be only for 20 years, mm. but it was extended to for the next uh, 20 years now. Mm. Mm. And uh, now in spite of having new economic policy in place for the last four decades, mm. there are still problems uh, uh, you know, faced by the Malay community. Mm. It was actually put up in place to in order to to take the Malay community closer mm. to the to the to the, the to the rest of the um, Malaysian uh, you know ethnic eth ethnic groups mm. in terms of income uh, mm. and so on mm. and so forth. But the but the result is, however, is that that we still do have a large number of uh, Malay households mm. which are really having income below 2,000 mm. uh, ringgit per month. Mm. Mm. So if you look at uh, the 40% the, the of the population of Malaysia, uh, the households, they are earning less than 2,000. Mm. And, 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 but 75% of this this category mm. are really Malay households. Mm. 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 In other words, what it simply means is that while well, neo-economic policy has done some certain, certain things good, mm. it may have outlived its usefulness. Mm. Mm. Now, the, the benefits of the NEP doesn't really trickle down all the way to the bottom mm. 40%. In other words, what, what the point I'm getting at is mm. that although we've had 40 years of affirmative policy mm. action, there is still need for affirmative af mm. policy action because there is still a large 40% of the population which are really left out mm. so you know so in order to 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 bring them up to to the to the to in le, you know in line with the rest of the society we need opposition we need uh, sorry uh, sorry what do you call uh, we need uh, uh, affirmative action affirmative and mm. to do that we you know we must have NEP in a different form mm. it is it should be not race based but need based so when you uh, address the problems of the marginalized groups, mm. and there are marginalized groups in every community, mm. you know. So we need to redefine mm. the goal of mm. NAP, mm. and and then uh, to, in order to bring about uh, more equitable income mm. and mm. distribution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. very good. Mm. Uh, uh, I was also going to ask you about this middle income trap, mm. and it relates to the, your response to my first question. There's a lot of discussion uh, in, in official circles in the community in Malaysia in general about is Malaysia stuck in this middle income trap? Uh, I must say as an outsider who works on other countries in the region, Malaysia is pretty comfortably stuck. It's, it's of course a very prosperous country relative to its neighbourhood. But to the extent there is this middle income trap, would you say it's a, a generic or would you say it's primarily homegrown? That is largely homegrown in the sense that, you know, we in Malaysia, unfortunately, inadvertently, you know, I, I, I thought that uh, to stay competitive in, internationally, we get to keep our wages low. Mm. And uh, the, 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 the Malaysian wages were really going up until the until early 1990s, in mm. fact, until the end of 1980s. Mm. And uh, to, to the extent that it, it made Malaysian exports less competitive. Mm. So in order to make Malaysian comp exports competitive, mm. we, 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 it was thought then that it's good to keep wages low. Mm. And the only way to keep wages low is to allow foreign workers to come mm. and work in, mm -hmm. in large numbers. Mm -hmm. So the huge influx of foreign workers into the country mm. has actually suppressed mm. wages mm. and prevented uh, you know, uh, industrial upgrading, mm. uh, like automation and so on mm. and so forth. So unfortunately, uh, that this is an un this is an unintended result of mm. that. So we got caught in this low income trap, mm. and and uh, and and, uh, and uh, rapid economic growth really did not translate into higher wages mm. and uh, higher household income mm. and so on and so forth. Does that mean that you would actually uh, place restrictions on the entry of low skilled 
uh, foreign workers or would you tax them more heavily or how, how would you manage that mm, transition? Uh, there are nearly 4 million foreign workers in mm. this uh, in, in Malaysia. Which is and about two, 30 two million, two, yeah, but 2 million are, are legal and other 2 million are said to be uh, mm. uh, illegal and all that. Mm. We need foreign workers mm. and the foreign workers have contributed enormously to mm. Malaysia's uh, economic development. Mm. You know, there's no doubt about it at all. Mm. In fact, foreign workers are sometimes abused and misused and, you know, underpaid, over, mm. overworked and so on mm. and so forth. Mm. That's not Point. The point is that we need foreign workers. We should reward them adequately, and there's no reason to sort of you know, you know to to pay them differently from we pay the locals and so on mm. and so forth. So, and in other words, allow wages to go up, mm. uh, you know, yes. along with, uh, the, with, with the with the rest. Very good. Okay, thank you very much, Arif. I've just okay. got the wind up signal uh, okay. from the boss, right. and so I think are we out of time now? No response. But he said ten minutes. No. Oh. Oh, okay. Sorry, I wasn't sure what you wanted me to do. Yep. Okay. Sure. Okay, so uh, do it now. Uh, Arif, thank you very much. Uh, your public lecture was illuminating, as has been this discussion. I must say, I remain fundamentally optimistic about Malaysia, and I, that's, the, that's the message I get from you, but there does need to be change. No, Malaysia has huge potential. There's mm. no doubt about it, about it at all. In mm. fact, uh, it has enormous potential. Yes. But to unlock the potential, we need to bring about... Mm serious reforms in yes, place, yes. you know, and uh, Malaysia is globalizing and we, we need to integrate with the rest of the world. Mm. And to do that, you know, we can only do that when we, mm. our institutional reforms are mm. in place. Yes. So uh, we hope that uh, yes. the political trends in Malaysia will mm. contribute to this transformation. Yes. Yeah. Again. Thank you very much Thank you. and please come and visit us again regularly. Uh, <laughs>